Hello and welcome back to the channel. Behind me I've got my 2J, my turbos down there. You may have noticed that the intake is on. The turbos might look like they're a different color than normal. There's a reason for that. Literally the majority of today's video is just going to be me going over how I did that. But before anything else, before I even talk about any of this, I did get a chance to go to Wichita's first cars and coffee of the season. So I'm going to insert some footage of that here. I know you guys would probably get a little bit bored just looking at me painting turbos turbos for 10 minutes. So I'm going to try to start off with a bang and show you some of my favorite cars that I saw a little bit here and there. Just cars entering, exiting, so forth. And a quick little mention, I'm no longer going to be blurring out license plates. Um, all I ask is that you don't like try to steal people's personal information. Don't do that. Anyways, here's the footage. <laughs> in my yard. I've taken the time to grind these off. Originally, I didn't want to grind these off because I was afraid that I wouldn't get enough engagement from whatever tool I was using to torque down. But it looks like if I grind a little bit off of this and then grind a little bit out of that thing, the combination is enough to get it to fit flush. So I'll just show you how much I ground off real quick. Kind of hard to see like that. That's about how much of a difference it is right there. So doing that to all the screws and then I ground out the inside circles of that a little bit too. So I wouldn't have to take off as much of 
each item. So I'm gonna keep doing that to the rest of the screws and once they're all done, I'm gonna test fit the intake back up here and it should all go together just fine. All right, I've got all of these ground down. This is ground down on the inside of all of these finally. Moment of the truth, I'm gonna try and put it up there and we will see. I do not see a gap. So I think that was successful. And that's without the gasket. So with the gasket, if there was any contact between the metal parts, um, with the gasket, there won't be any. That way it will seal. All right, quick little update on the 2JZ intake manifold. I'm gonna flip the camera around so you can see. This has been painted and this has been painted to match. Um, I finally got all the hardware that I needed to put it together. Back here, I've got this OEM nut holding it together here. If you try to put one of the aftermarket nuts that came with the kit, it won't go together. On the back side of this is the aftermarket nut that they supplied with the kit. I've got one there, one there, and one there as well as one right there. And then in these holes on the intake runners, that's where you put the long hex heads or hex studs. Last one's over here on this side. But in order to get those to work, you actually have to drill the holes out that these go through on the runners so that they can thread into the threads on this piece. So you have to modify a few things. Smaller nut there, drill the holes on the runner for the longer bolts to go through to this. And then on these pieces, I'm gonna try to find a really coarse brass wire brush to buff all the rust off so I can paint these so they look decent. There's a f in my yard. Okay, so quick update. Um, I'm still working on the turbo manifold for this. I've been cleaning parts for the longest time. I'm just gonna do a quick rundown of the method I've been using. It works really freaking well. It is a little bit time consuming, but it works pretty freaking well. So I'm gonna turn the camera around so you can see what I've been doing. So I'm getting ready to paint these with some high temp paint. I've already cleaned this piece this piece that piece and that piece there i'm gonna have to do a little bit extra with these i might even have to take them apart entirely to clean those but what i was doing was first of all i took a wire brush buffed these all down um, the coarser the brush the better as long as it's not like a cut off wheel don't use that just use a wire brush but buff all the rust off of these that you can um, it is pretty hard to get down in there at some point you'll probably have to get like a little tiny bit from a dremel to clean those spaces out but these are all cleaned up then i wiped them down with lacquer thinner removed all the rust as soon as you put the lacquer thinner on you'll start it to see it kind of turn like a brown orange color what i then then was take like a wire brush hand wire brush just a metal one and then a nylon brush and brush it until the majority of that brown orange color had dissipated and it was more clear um, that way you can tell that most of the rust has been removed and it's just the cast iron that's left it's obviously not perfect because down in that corner you can still see a little bit of brown but i got it the best i could get it for the materials that i had i don't have a sandblast or anything you can kind of see some brown right there too point is lacquer thinner cleans this stuff really really well at least cast iron it cleans pretty good and just for reference that's what it used to look like it was all crusty and discolored with oil and stuff like that that angle right there is a really good one to show how bad they all were you can see how coarse that surface is right down in there how smooth and almost silver this is but anyways started with that then that uh, virgin lacquer thinner cleans better because virgins haven't lost yet so this never loses and then this is just the final cleaner it's just a cleaning solvent so i usually use that after any hard cleaning so i can prep the surface for primer this gets all the dirt and little 
particles of rust off the surface. Wipe it down with the microfiber. I'll show you the ones I've been using, by the way. These things, you can get these in a roll of like 100 at Walmart for 15, 20 bucks. Um, they're just tear off. So you can wash them, throw them away, do whatever you want with them. But anyways, wipe it down with one of those. Then this should be good for some primer. And speaking of primer, I went to Lowe's and got these delicious beverages right here. So this is high heat primer. This is reversed right now. I'm probably just gonna flip the camera so you can actually see this or just hold it in my hand because that's smart. But anyways, high heat primer up to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. And to follow that up, I got some satin black ceramic coating. It's rated to the same heat. And the reason that I got these is because typically exhaust manifolds get a lot hotter than the, even the block does. So these are only rated up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which this is what I painted the block with. I started with this primer enamel and then went to this enamel paint with ceramic in it. But typically exhaust manifolds get closer to 850 to 1500 degrees, depending on how hot they get. And running turbos, I'm gonna assume it's gonna be closer to the thousand degree mark, especially under load. So that's why I got these. These will definitely handle the heat very well. I'm thinking satin black's gonna match the cast iron look pretty well already so should look pretty good once it's all done and i will go ahead and clean up the aluminum on the turbo as well so that way it doesn't look all crusty it currently sounds like the world is ending because there are sirens and airplanes all around me but i just wanted to take a second to say that I went and bought a few more brushes so I could clean my turbos out a little bit better. Some different sizes. These are like $5 a piece at Home Depot. And I've got one of the turbine housings right here. So this is the hot side. I'm going to try to clean out all the carbon from the inside of there. And from the inside of that side there. And then the bottom down there when I flip it over. It's currently soaking in some engine degreaser right now. It's going to help break apart any of the stuff that's stuck to it. So I'm going to clean this out, paint the outside, and then put it back together. All right, so I've cleaned the inside of this out. It is no longer all black and carbonized. Same with this. It's not perfect, but it's better than it was. Um, same with the front side here. Got all the carbon out, cleaned all that off. Clean the ring around there. Now I can mask this thing off and then paint this one. All right, so I've got this turbo all cleaned up. You can see it's no longer brown at all. It's very, very silver right now. Um, it's gonna have a couple of places that are a little bit brown, like down in the corners where I can't really get a wire brush as easily, but it's all cleaned up. Most of the rust is gone. I'm gonna go ahead and just get ready to paint it. One important step I should mention is that if you are cleaning your turbos, make sure that you have something to clean them out from the inside out with. I used an air compressor to blow out all the carbon dust that was created, all the rust that was coming off. You don't want that inside of your turbo when you put it back together, so you need to make absolutely sure that any piece of the turbo that gets taken apart, you clean it out thoroughly. So air compressor, microfiber towel usually does the job.
Okay, so I just spent several hours preparing my first turbo, painting my first turbo. I finally got my second turbo taken apart and I'm getting ready to paint it right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera around so you can actually see me painting it. And then next time I show the turbos, they should be completely painted, completely assembled. And hopefully I'll have found all the gaskets I need to put the entire turbo manifold on. So like probably next video, turbos are gonna be going on the engine, which is really exciting. So hell yeah. Alright, here I am again. I hope you guys were able to enjoy that large portion of the video of me cleaning and painting things. Hopefully you learned a thing or two about how to paint exhaust manifolds, prepare exhaust manifolds, turbos, good stuff like that for paint, for your engine. Now I will say by the time the next video comes out, those turbos will be bolted to that engine. Pretty much everything should be there mechanically. Here coming up pretty soon within the next video or two, I'm going to have to go over pretty much everything that's going to need to be done to get that thing running. So I recently just contacted my local tuning shop to see what injectors I need to be running, what coil packs, fuel pump, ECU. I still haven't got a response yet, but within the next couple of videos, you guys will be able to do see what I'm going to be doing with those things. As soon as I get a response, I'm going to purchase literally everything I need to put on that engine, put it together, and then start making the wiring harness. Because I know you guys have been waiting for a fat minute to see what ECU I'm running and how I'm actually gonna get it working with a different car. So coming soon, I promise it's coming soon. But as per the use, that is it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed my content, please like and subscribe. Consider hitting that notification bell if you're interested in watching my other videos when they come out and as usual peace out make the rest of your day a great freaking day see you guys in the next one <laughs>